Japan was a place to be. When you come home from Japan, people know who you are. People took you and, and knew your name immediately. For whenever you're listening to the Joshi Pod, your weekly podcast about the world of Japanese women's wrestling, Joshi Wrestling. I'm your host, Eric Howard, coming to you from beautiful San Diego, California. First, I'd like to thank Josh Barnett and Priscilla Kelly for joining me last week. Not quite the long interview formats I normally do, but it was really nice hearing from those two. If you haven't heard it, go back and uh, give it a listen. Uh, also, if you, while you're going back and listening to that, uh, please support the podcast by subscribing, rating, and reviewing on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter at the Joshi Pod. Next week for our Friday the 13th Spooktacular. Did I just say that? <laughs> We're joined by the toxic spider Tekla. She's a wrestler out of Austria who toured with Ice Ribbon has an, and has another tour on the horizon. Uh, she was terrific to chat with, and I really think you're going to enjoy uh, the chat I had with her. That's next week, but let's take a look and see what we have on the show this week. First, we have our three count headlines of the week. Our show of the week is the December 3rd Diana show from Shinkiba First Ring, which was main evented by a dream team. We'll highlight some of the big shows in Japan this week. We'll also take a look and see where Joshi performers are performing outside of Japan. I might as well just change it to where in the world is Miko Satomura. And in the main event, we're joined by Zoe Sky, who's done a tour of stardom under the name Dust. She shares some big news about future Japanese bookings. You want to stick around and hear it. First, our three count headlines of the week are brought to you by one of our show sponsors, Quiet Wyatt Designs. Reach out to Quiet Wyatt Designs if you need a logo, t-shirt, sticker, hat, or so much more designed. They've done great work for several wrestlers and promotions. Some of their designs are available on Redbubble. You can also reach them on Facebook by searching Quiet Wyatt, Q-U-I-E-T-W-Y-A-T-T-1 one word designs you get great quality and great service when you tag team with quiet wyatt designs headline number one sorry not sorry Sari announced that her self-produced show that she'll be participating in stardom soon. She's also still on the WWE's radar. You, you got to think if there's another uh, May Young classic, she'll probably participate in that as well. Uh, looks like the, the, the E has finally figured out how to use these Joshi performers by putting them in uh, higher profile roles and they produce. We can start putting together our dream match list right now with the, uh, the stardom women and also the, uh, the women in the WWE who are amazing as well. Headline number two. Thank you, women of Gato Move. They are on Pro Wrestling Tees, as Lulu Pencil just said. Uh, she has a shirt on the site, Mitsuru Kono, and the Gato Move logo shirt is available as well. And they are announcing that more shirts are to come. I've already ordered mine. Headline number three. Hey, Stardom, what's the store? E. It hasn't been announced why, but Stardom's online store is down right now. There's speculation that they're moving to the Bushi Road servers, but them not having a store up this time of year especially... Seems awfully strange. The show of the week this week is the December 3rd show from Diana at Shinjuku Face. It had uh, 500 plus people attended the show. In the opener, the Zaps defeated Miyuki Takase and Madeline in about nine minutes. Uh, the second match, Jenny Rose defeated Hibiki uh, a little over eight minutes. Asha Kong defeated Manami. Uh, in the fourth match, Jaguar Yokota and Ayako Sato defeated Haruki Yumeski and Sakura Hirota in almost 17 minutes. Sakura Hirota's kids are cuter than Baby Yoda. Change my mind. In the semi-main, Kyoko Inoue defeated Kaoru and Chihiro Hashimoto in about 12 minutes. In the main event, it's the one I want to talk about. It's Sari and Sayuri, Shuri Kondo, faced uh, Mayu Iwatani, the, the dream team of Mayu Iwatani and Takumi Aroha, went to a 20-minute draw. I really love when the women from one promotion go over to another promotion. It's really neat to see the stardom women facing these other women in, in matches. Sumeri Natsu has a show, show coming up soon, a self-produced show that's going to have some crossover as well and I think that's amazing. Uh, I really love that. Highlights of this match are available online. I'll put a link in the notes. I was happy that Shuri Kondo didn't take the pin. I thought she was in the match to lose, but I'm, I'm glad it went to a draw. 
Oh, hey guys, what's going on? My name is Steve. I'm the host of the last podcast you'd want. Do you like movies? Well, that's what we talk about. I bring a guest on, maybe more than one, and we talk about movies they like, movies they don't like, movies from their childhood, movies they give them nightmares. Just some of the few topics that we talk about on the last podcast you'd want. So if you like movies, you could find us on Apple Podcasts, you could find us on Google Podcasts, you could find us on most major podcast outlets. Tip the veal, try the staff, check out the show. Tonight, Seedling has a show at Shinkiba First Ring, made evented by Nanai Takahashi, Shuri Kondo, and Miyuki Takase versus Kaho Kobayashi, Rina Yamashita, who I love, 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 and Asuka. Also on the show, uh, Mei Saruga is on there. Uh, she's becoming a pretty much a regular at the Seedling shows now. On December 7th, Tokyo Joshi Pros at a beauty college in Harajuku. The Bakaretsu sisters and Yuna Manase face Rika Tatsumi, Miyu Yamashita, and Mai Miyumi in the main event. All the Tokyo Joshi Pro regulars are going to be there, except for Shoko Nakajima, who's missing this show. Also on the 7th, uh, Gato moves at Ichikaya Chocolate Square. YMZ is at the Nishi Yarai Daishi Nishi Studio. I love saying that name. On December 8th, Marvelous has the Jigusa Nagayo show at uh, Korokan Hall, where she's facing Takumi Aroha in her final match that should be amazing also on the 8th at Shinkiba Ring uh, Stardom has a show where Andres Miyagi and Kagetsu have their first singles match since Miyagi was banished from Oedo Tai uh, Sendai Girls are in Osaka on the 8th and Zero One which has Jaguar Yokota on the show is in Aichi Sendai Girls are in Fukuoka on the 9th on the 10th Sendai Girls are in Hiroshima and on the 12th Actress Girls are at Shinkiba First Ring <laughs> Tonight and tomorrow, Miko Satamura and Hiroya Matsumoto are performing in Australia for the New Horizons Pro Wrestling. Uh, you can follow them on uh, their Twitter. It's pretty fun to see uh, the hijinks they're getting up to in uh, in Australia. On December 15th, Miko is going to be in Sheffield, England for Progress Wrestling. She'll be defending her Women's Championship. And also this coming weekend, Tam Nakano, Mayu Iwatani will be in California. I'm going. I'm going to be there. Uh, they will be facing Sumi Sakai and Nicole Savoy at the Chara Expo 2019. Uh, the matches will be at 2 o'clock each day on uh, Saturday and Sunday. If you spend uh, or if you purchase a T-shirt at the New Japan booth, a stardom t-shirt at the New Japan booth, uh, you'll be available to, to go to the meet and greet at 4 o'clock each day. It's not too soon to talk about Tokyo Joshi Pro's show at WrestleMania weekend in Tampa, Florida. Uh, they will be there April 3rd uh, at WrestleCon. Tickets and pricing will be available next week, according to the WrestleCon uh, Twitter account. So uh, keep an eye on that and get your tickets. I'm sure they'll sell out very quickly. The main event interview is sponsored by the Level Up Pro Wrestling School. B-Boy, who has over 20 years in the wrestling industry with companies including Ring of Honor, CCW, Pro Wrestling Gorilla. Uh, he's the head trainer. If you happen to catch the recent Chronicle episode about Cain Velasquez on the WWE Network, you saw Level Up Pro Wrestling uh, School and some of the trainees featured prominently. If you're looking to get started or looking to improve your skills, contact Level Up Pro Wrestling School at levelupschool.sd at gmail.com or give them a call at 619-825-7668 and Hey, John Cena, follow your boy B-Boy on Twitter at New Age Punisher. Before we get to the main event chat with Zoe Sky, I want to remind you guys to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to podcasts. You can follow me on Twitter at Eric San Diego and the show at The Joshi Pod. Please support all of our show sponsors. They help me out so much. I'll put a link in, uh, on the show notes for all the sponsors. We'll see you next week with the Toxic Spider Tecla. Arigato gozaimasu. She started training under the tutelage of the late JT Lightning and later under Johnny Gargano. She made a pro wrestling debut in 2007 under the ring name Angel Dust and a losing effort to Jessica Havoc. She became a regular on the independent scene in Ohio and Pennsylvania from 2007 to 2016. She was part of Rise One Ignite in November of 2016. She made her shimmer debut the next day, taking on Leva Bates. Uh, continuing to grind it out in the indie scene, she collected several titles along the way. She later, later quit being an angel and just changed her name to Dust. The fallen flower Kikio said about her, she is such an underrated talent in this industry and has been busting her ass for over a decade. Don't let her size fool you because she's a hard hitter that will surprise you when you're least expecting it. On December 1st, 2017, she appeared at Rise 6 Brutality in Southgate, California, along with Kikio and several others. This is where I'd like to bring onto the show... Zoe Sky, thank you for joining the show. 
No problem. Thank you for having me. And thank you for the research. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. So that night uh, changed some things for you. What did you know going into that night? Yeah, so uh, I knew uh, a little more than nothing, but not much more than a little something. Uh, you know, I was kind of given the, the rub of there's a possibility uh, some things could work out between uh, a connection with, with Rise and Stardom. Uh, so, so really going in, all I knew was that uh, they were in a working relationship here in the U.S. and things were in talks, but nothing much more than that. Uh, you know, the possibility of, of things to work out in the future, you know, potential, you know, talent, you know, swap and, and you know, send girls over, bring girls over and so forth. Uh, but nothing was really definitive. So going into that night, all I knew was that we were going to have some stardom guests as in, uh, you know, Rossi, uh, you know, the owner of stardom. And, and really, that was all we knew for sure that was going to happen. So was there a tryout that day or day before or something like that? Uh, yeah, so be before all of the RISE shows, it's not really so much a tryout uh, as much as it is a, a training seminar. Uh, you know, before each RISE show, RISE weekend, RISE event, uh, he has a, a seminar. Uh, so many, so many talented, you know, trainers and, and, and females and, and males as well have been in to train and run these training seminars. You know, so uh, young up and coming girls can go ahead and, and uh, you know, sign up for these seminars, pay the pay the fee. Uh, travel out to wherever Chicago, LA. Uh, he's been. We've done them in Texas and Florida as well. Uh, and, and do these take place in these seminars? And with these seminars is an opportunity to be looked at by these other promotions in these areas and being looked at uh, by by Shimmer and, and so forth. So uh, it's not so much a trial as much as it is uh, a big eye opener to people to to see and hear about who you are, you know, female talent wise for these bigger promotions. So Rossi was at this one. Was uh, I, I was Bull Nakano at this one as well? Uh, she was. Uh, yes, I don't think she did that seminar. I believe the seminar she did was in Chicago, but not for LA. Uh, okay. She was there for the weekend. Honestly, I don't think. I think that was the this was the second Rise seminar in, in LA, uh, and I, I was visiting family, so I wasn't there for the seminar and so forth. I was there for the show. Uh, so they may have been there. Uh, I'm not sure if Bull was there for sure or not, but they were there through the show and through the rest of the weekend for sure. All right. So, so that night they, they make an announcement. T tell me about how, uh, tell me about that announcement. Yeah. So, uh, I think by that point I was finished with my match. Uh, I was, I was pretty much done with my rule for the evening. And, uh, you know, with that, I usually go back and just get changed and kind of unwind and, and think about things as the night progressed and where I want things to go for myself from there. Uh, you know, in that, in that role, in that position in my, in my spot in the company. Uh, but I was pulled aside and said, Hey, uh, don't go far, stick around. We need uh, a handful of girls to, to come out to the ring when we call you. And that was all that was said. It was uh, just just kind of stay here, linger around. Uh, don't worry about who else is here. Just just stick around. And when we let you know, you guys are coming to the ring. So nothing was really told even at that point. Like, uh, you know, once once he said it, I kind of had an inching of, of what was going on because I was previously told that there would, would be a potential working relationship, but nothing was set in stone. Uh, so, you know, uh, they, they went out, introduced Rossi. Uh, you know, Chile and Melissa was out there because she has a lot to do with the the girls from the States going to uh, to Sardom and working with Sardom. Uh, so she's kind of like their uh, their talent scout in a sense and just somebody to, to help them in, in a relationship, you know, between America and Japan. Uh, so, you know, they were all in the ring and they brought us all out uh, and, and pretty much just just told us that. You know, we, we were a lucky few girls that, you know, had earned a spot and felt that they they felt we deserved uh, a chance to go, you know, debut for stardom. And, and all of the, the group of us, the six of us, none of us had been to Japan. Uh, none of us had done too many uh, long international tours anyway. So that tour, uh, you know, nothing was set in stone even at that moment. We were, you know, after that, we were kind of given dates and so forth, but nothing was really, uh, you know, obviously this didn't happen for another almost six months after. So nothing was completely 100% set in stone, but we were told that we were going to Japan to work with stardom. I happened to be sitting in the front row that night. Oh, how, I did. <laughs> <laughs> how real was the emotion? There's a lot of emotion from the young ladies in the ring. How, how real was that? Absolutely. Uh, so for me, I'm uh, not always, but usually pretty good at just uh, at keeping a pretty, pretty good poker face. Uh, I, I seem awfully careless and carefree at times. 
Uh, but I just have a way of just not showing uh, too much emotion. But what gets me is seeing other people show emotion. And when I see other people react in ways and, you know, smiles and tears and sadness, and, and no matter what it is, that causes me to react. Uh, for me, even though I was in the spot where, hey, I'm going with these girls, I was happy for each of them because I could tell how happy and sincere they all were that they were given this opportunity. You know, for me, I'd been wrestling for so long, you know, for half the girls in the ring, I've been wrestling as much, if not longer than half the amount of girls were, you know what I mean? Like you add their, their amount of time up and they, they still were just hitting the amount of time that I'd been around. So for me, it's not that I wasn't happy for the position. If by all means, obviously I, I was and still am. Uh, I, I was happy for these girls to get this opportunity so early in their careers and, and when they still deserve it and when they're, when they're ready for it. Kikio said she saw one tear come down the side of your face. I don't think that's true. I want proof. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you, you've been grinding it out for quite a while. Was, was Japan a, a goal for you ever? Absolutely. Uh, so I had been kind of given a, a, a tip years ago uh, from a promoter up in Cleveland, Ohio, who had mentioned that I'm not sure that it was stardom or who in, in general. All it, all it had said was, hey, there's an opportunity uh, for uh, a trip to Japan. Uh, somebody needs some girls or something along that line uh, was really all that was presented. And at that time, I did not have my passport. Uh, so I kind of, you know, played off the, well, I don't know if it's my loss, their loss. I don't know what I should do at this point. Uh, at that time, my dad was uh, was still around, and I let him know about the opportunity, and he actually gave me the money to get my passport. And at the time, with so much else going on, it just it just sat on the back burner. I never went and got my passport. Uh, you know, that opportunity obviously came and went. Uh, literally up until probably right but right after I started working Rise shows was when I first got my passport. So uh, when it comes to international travels and so forth and Japan trips and, and everywhere else, uh, you know, I put a lot of the, the fault on myself. I put all of the fault on myself for not putting the effort in to put myself in the position to be able to travel internationally as I did not have my passport. Um, but once I now that I have it, you know, uh, I'm just I'm just glad I do. You know, you never know when you're when you're going to come and go and what the opportunity is going to bring. Uh, so I, I, you know, I, I kick myself in the ass all the time that I wish I had just gotten it you know, years ago when my, when my dad tried to, you know, push me to do it, he was one that always helped push me to, to do better for myself and, and, you know, not to sit there and, and wait for something just to go ahead and go and do it. Uh, so, you know, the, the opportunity was there. I never took it. Uh, so I, I, like I said, I, I don't know what, how big of an opportunity that could have been, you know, obviously traveling internationally and traveling to Japan, especially at that time was probably, uh, probably I don't want to say more meaningful than it is now but uh at that time you know was when Heidi Lovelace and uh so many talented girls who were putting their names out and were just waiting for that one last piece to really get that attention on themselves that trip to Japan that trip to work to stardom that was the time when Japan was a place to be when you come home from Japan people know who you are. People took you and, and knew your name immediately. Uh, you know, that, that still holds today, but that was when it was really, really starting to kick off more and more that I, at least that I noticed. So yes, it's my fault. I kicked myself in the ass, but I'm definitely happy with where I am now. Good. So do you remember when you first saw Japanese women's wrestling at all? Um, yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been within the, the few years that I've been training, uh, you know, like I, before I started wrestling, I knew nothing about indie wrestling, let alone overseas Japanese wrestling. It just wrestling in general, it, it's been within the last probably, you know, eight, 10 years. And it, it was, uh, scary. These, these girls and even the guys are so intense, you know, I just watching them, you know, you, you, you saw a completely different uh, level of competition there than what you saw here, if that make any sense. It does. I talked to Josh Barnett this weekend about uh, training, the young ladies training over there, how they train it almost as a shoot before they learn how to work. Absolutely. I could agree to that for sure. <laughs> All right. So did you do anything to prepare after you found out you're going? Did you do anything to prepare for your trip over to Japan? No, man, I was terrible. <laughs> I did not. Um, you know, it was one of those things where 
we were told we were going, we were given dates, it's just the way things kind of came and went, it was, it was hard to know exactly what, when, why, and how things were happening. Um, and then when, as it happened, it just happened so quick. Um, you know, even now, uh, I, I'm still like, okay, I, I, I should be doing a better job of preparing for these, for these things. And, and, and I just haven't put that full effort into preparing, but it, for my mindset is, I know what I'm doing when it comes to being in the ring with people. You know, I, I went over there. I was there for five weeks last time, you know, the, the first time. So speaking to these girls and, and dealing with the wrestling, like not that it's easy by any means, but I know what to expect. I, I, I'm, I'm prepared mentally to go into this physically. You know, I'm just I, there's no way to prepare. You know, you you're going to put your body at this risk every time you go. You know, I train here in the States, but it's still not to that same aspect that they train. You know, they're, they're constantly just throwing their bodies around and, and just so many other things. Like, uh, I was, I've been telling people the amount of, of drills that they do, the, like the rules and, and, and so forth that they do is I would never done so many in my life before going to Japan and just, just the rules uh, alone, uh, just to kind of warm up and stretch out and loosen your body. Uh, and just to kind of get that that feel of of the you know your body in the ring uh, was overwhelming to me. I, I get very very uh, sick, motion sickness kind of stuff. So like when it came to all the rolling around, I just got dizzy and I felt sick constantly. Um, you know, and that didn't change the whole time I was there. So there's no in that aspect, there's no preparing for it. I just have to go there and just gotta do it. Um, but I am actually about to go. Uh, nothing is hundred percent official as I haven't gotten like visa paperwork and so forth, but I'm about to go on my second tour with stardom here in uh, a little over a month. So, you know, prepare wise, I just, I'm just ready to go, you know? Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Do you know when you're about when your start date will be? Uh, it should be, uh, like January 2nd. I guess the very beginning of January. Oh, so you'll so. be there for the, the big week over there then. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, which looks like it's getting even bigger than what it, initially was when I found out I was going uh but yeah so should uh, so far like I said I I never t- I haven't told anybody like like really thrown it out I've let promoters and, and family and stuff know I just I haven't really announced it just because you know, until I get official like visa paperwork and like you know flight information in my hands I'm just I don't want to like sit here and tell myself I'm going and I'm you know and something happens and I don't you know what I mean okay. uh I should be about about two months I believe all of January and all of February I'll be there I'm going in March I'm just gonna miss <laughs> uh, we'll be able to pass each other in the air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So you're flying over to Japan. Are, have you have, have you let yourself get excited at all? I mean, knowing you're heading to Japan for the first time after you know being on the Indies for a while. Oh, for sure. Uh, you know, as soon as as soon as the 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 word was kind of put that they were there was a working relationship, I thought, well, not that I feel I 100 percent deserve to be picked to go. But I know I'm 100% going to put myself in a position where I deserve to go. Uh, but as soon as I was told that I was going, uh, no matter how long, I, I, you know, like I said, it was, it was about a six or so month wait before we actually ended up going. But that whole time I knew, okay, I'm going. I just need to make sure that I'm, I'm ready, you know. And I, I just, I mean, it was, it, was, it was exciting news because, you know, uh, even on the indies with all the people that I'm around, not a lot of people have gotten that opportunity. So it's like, hey, like, this is something fun. I can tell my friends, I can tell my family and tell my fellow peers, you know, and it's something that we can all connect with. You know, I know I personally love to hear when people have positive news, when people are getting big and great opportunities. I love hearing about it. So when I when I, so in my opinion, like I'm like, man, like this would be a cool conversation to have with somebody who I really like and trust and just, you know, who I know I can get some support out of. And, and I definitely got that the whole way. So I, I just, and like I said, even that first trip, I've already been home for a year and a half and I'm still excited for that trip. Good. That's awesome. All right. So the day-to-day stuff is the stuff that intrigues me so much about when you guys head over there. And so when you land in the airport, who's there to greet you? Oh man. Uh, they were on the ball. Rossi and, uh, I mean, I feel terrible. I can't remember his cameraman's name, but the cameraman was there. They had the camera rolling the second we landed, and they wanted, uh, you know, and and a welcoming pro uh, promo. I, I don't even know what they wanted. I didn't understand. I just started talking, and it never made sense. <laughs> so, but they were there. They picked us up. They were. I mean, I think uh, I ended up flying in uh, with Britt Baker. We ended up being on the same flight. 
um, we were the last flight. So by the time we got the uh, got there, uh, all the girl out of all the girls that were supposed to go, the the lineup got changed. Obviously, you had heard, uh, it was you know, uh, yeah, 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 literally. You know, uh, Delilah and Shotzi didn't end up going on the trip at all. Uh, but but by the time uh, Britt Baker and I had landed, Kylie Ray and Kikyo were already there, bags in hand, ready to go. So we got there, you know, we, we each did a quick little, little, hey, thanks for having us to Japan kind of thing. It jumped in the Sardom van and, and off we went. So you're staying at the, there's like a little townhouse or something you guys stay at or, or yeah, the, jo- the dojo itself? Uh, right now it's just a little, like a, it's, it's our own little place. It's the, no, no dojo right now because they're the training, they change training facilities. So. Okay. So you're, you're uh, rooming with the, the other young ladies that are over there? Yeah. Um, and at the time when we got there, the only other person who was there was Viper from the UK. Uh, from I think she's from Scotland. Uh, but she was the only other one who was already there. Whoever may have been there prior to us had already had already left. So it was the four of us and then and Viper, That's which awesome. thankfully, because it, because of her, we were able to figure out the town. We were able to figure out where we needed to be and how we needed to get there and so forth. I could not be more thankful to have uh viper of all people there when we got there she helped us out tremendously all right so you land you you got your place to stay is that when the do- the, the training starts happening before the first show yeah so uh we got there right before i think we we all got in maybe on like a thursday and then we had shows like friday and saturday or, or saturday sunday so i mean as soon as we got there it was drop bags you know we had the rest of the day to kind of get kind of settled and then the next morning it was yeah, head head to training, and you know, went to training, uh, got things figured out. Uh, you know, not matches weren't necessarily one hundred percent. You know, like there wasn't one hundred percent like who we were working. You know, who was wrestling who the, the following day, but they pretty much gave like the layout of okay, like you guys are here. We're gonna do this 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 training drill and and whatever. And now, all right, off to shows we go. So we had one day of training and then right into shows. So there wasn't much time to really even just get accustomed to anything. It was just get there and go. <laughs> Throw you into the deep end and see how you do, right? Literally, yeah. It was, it was a little scary, but I, I tell you what, if it, if it wasn't for having uh, just talented girls on our end who went and having just, the, the, you know, obviously, you know, the stardom girls have talent. They, they, there's a reason that they're all on these shows and there's a reason they get to travel the world as well. Uh, you know, like if, if it wasn't for the fact that there was a lot of trust put into each other, you know, into one another. It, it, things could have been crazy, but it definitely was uh, 100% uh, the the easiest welcoming we could have had. All right. Before we go into some individual matches, because my, my listeners like to listen to, to know about the young ladies over in Japan, what they like to work with. I want to ask you a couple of things. What was your favorite thing about Japan, that, not wrestling wise? Uh, just, just sightseeing. I like, I like getting to be touristy and check things out. So being able to be in Tokyo and just kind of wander off on my own to just kind of explore the culture was, was pretty cool. Did you go to 7-Eleven or Lawson or Family Mart at all? That's where we lived. Yeah. <laughs> that's where, uh, that was, it was on every corner, every, yeah, that's all we did was, is in and out quick marts everywhere. So yeah, that's, that's where we were. That's, I mean, I literally like eat there probably five days out of the week when, when I'm there. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. And okay. So your first match was against uh, AZM, correct? Azuma, yes. Yes. Uh, she's, she was pretty, oh, she's, she's a young lady still. What was she like to work with? You know, uh, I, I felt terrible. I went over there not knowing who any of the girls were, what, what was going on, who was who and what was what. Uh, but as soon as I heard her name, I knew that I'd heard her name before. And I believe it was even Kikio, but somebody was like, oh, man, you're going to have a good match, your first match. Um, super easy to, to work with. You know, obviously, you know, like you said, she's super young. Um, but it's just, you know, she immediately, the first, the first match in, the first weekend in, she challenged me uh, to, just, to just be more confident and be, you know, just, uh, just a better all-around worker. You know, like there were things that she did that, uh, you know, I am not accustomed to to 
you know, having done here in the States, you know, I, I don't, I don't have girls flipping around and jumping all over me. I'm the one doing all the running around, flipping and jumping, you know, and, and here it was, I'm, I'm catching her and, and, and throwing her around as opposed to the other way around. So I immediately just went in there and just, I, 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 I went in with a very open mind that I knew that uh, a lot of things would change while I was there uh, just in my, my own, moves in my own you know mindset and so forth and from the first match uh on it was they gave me a confidence but they also gave me uh a test to be able to to work at bettering myself while i was there so it was definitely a great match i was i was very happy with getting that as my first match while i was there good and you faced jungle kiona a few different times what was she like to work with uh you, you can just tell she's uh she's a veteran leader uh, she just, you know, she was very intimidating to me. I was super nervous about having to be in matches with her. Um, but when it came down to having the matches, she was just complete professional. Uh, you know, she wasn't one to be too serious, but not be, you know, she was, she was, she was serious when she needed to be, but she was, you know, she had fun and she was goofy when she needed to be. She was just very much, uh, that, that almost veteran style worker to me. She was very, very professional. Were they welcoming to you guys backstage? They, they accept you guys in pretty well? Yeah. Um, I, I don't really feel like we had any kind of interaction with anybody that it was like, oh, you don't belong here. You know, like, I think I'm, I'm sure they're used to this where they constantly have, you know, foreigners over and stuff. I think it's more of just, you know, how you treat them is how they treat you. You know, how you put how much effort you put in, how much work you put into training in these matches is what they put back to you. So for them, it's it's not even necessarily that they do or don't want to be friends with you or anything like that. They just want to see that you come here, you know, or, or come there. You know, you come to their their country to work with them to to be professional wrestlers. You know, so I think for them, it's you know, if if they don't welcome us, it's because we messed up. Yeah. Okay. So on a different note, Sumeri Natsu. I think she's amazing. She's so entertaining. What was it like to work with Sumeri Natsu? It's it, it, all just like all the girls. It was just. It was it was a different it was she was different than all of the other girls, you know what I mean? Like, uh, but in a good way, you know, she she stood out a little more. She was a little more goofy, a little more fun, you know, was a little more laid back in things. Uh, but it's just, you know, like I, I, I I'm hoping that she's she's there and, and I can just interact with her more while when I go back. You know, I, they, I really, I just, I liked all those girls. I miss all those girls. And, and I, I love that when they came here uh, in April during WrestleMania weekend, uh, how immediately welcoming they were. And it was, it was just amazing. That's good. And then uh, one more person I want to ask you about is Momo Watanabe. She's, I think she's going to be a super duper star. Absolutely. I'm how she already hasn't been put out there a little bit more than she currently is uh kind of blows my mind uh but she is she is very she's one of those ones that she's very much a uh she, she's kind of more to herself but she's very much a perfectionist like she's there thinking she's not she's not that she's standoffish too much to a point or anything of that it's just she when she's at training or when she's at a show she's there she means business um and you can tell that in her work so she she's definitely somebody who uh, who's definitely going to get her name out there more and more, and she definitely deserves it. So has any, okay, so they were just purchased by Bushi Road, a, a different company. Was the communication this time for your uh, coming over different at all, or is it still basically the same as it was before? No, uh, so far 100% the same. Um, they actually did this change, uh, or this, 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 this being bought out, like in the middle of the, the talking process, like we'd pretty much given the okay, like these dates work for me and so forth and so on. And then I get a message that says, Hey, don't worry. This changes nothing. And I hadn't seen anything because you know, the time difference and such. So I'm scrolling through Twitter and I see that, you know, they have the, the, the buyout, you know, they got bought and stuff. And I was like, Oh, okay. Well, they say nothing's going to happen. There's only one way to find out. So, but so far, uh, literally everything has been a hundred percent exactly the same. no, no, I'm not. I'm not worried. There's going to be any kind of conflicting issues when I go. All right. What are some things you took away in ring that you brought back to you from Japan? Brought back to you with with you from Japan. Man, I think I hit people harder. Like those girls hit so hard, and I didn't. Like there were times where I'd be hitting these girls what I thought was as hard as I could hit them, and they're telling me to hit them harder. Like it's it was it was crazy to me just how just intense they were all of the time. Um, 
like forearms yeah. or what are you talking about yeah for kicks forearms every i mean i just if you just watch them they they are just not they they throw their entire bodies with all of their strikes with all of their moves with everything you know if, if when they're throwing kicks i mean I, they throw them you know they, they that's nothing that there's no you know everybody's like oh wrestling's fake and this and that like you know yeah we try to protect each other but these girls it's just, they they kick you they hit you whatever it is they they are not easy about it and they're you know none of them are that big it's just it's it's crazy to me how much they just really throw themselves around um but i definitely think that uh like there was just so much of a difference uh you know there is a difference in their style to our style of wrestling um, but I definitely came out of it with just a mindset of not everything that I, the, that we do here in the States that I've gotten used to doing has to be the same thing all the time. You know, they are constantly, you know, we're, we're just going over drills and going over things and then just watching all these matches, you know, there's a, there's a different, uh, psychology and there's a different just in ring process from there and here that it's just like, you know, I, I didn't want to bring back anything uh, negative, which I don't think there really was, but I definitely brought back uh, just a mindset of don't feel like things have to be a certain way, you know, definitely allow people to to have opinions and change things. And, you know, like, don't be afraid to let, you know, the crowd see a different, a different view of things. You know, it's, it's hard to explain. It's just, there's, there, there's such a different difference. Like this is that psychologist, that's that thought process between, how they react and interact and how their matches go. I think the weirdest thing for us while we were there was crowd reactions. With the, anytime I'm here, I'm so used to hearing a crowd 100% throughout my match. If I hear a quiet crowd, then I feel like something's wrong. You know, they, they just, they, they don't care what we're doing. They don't care how much we're beating the hell out of each other because they just aren't reacting. Over there, they don't react until you give them a pause for them to react. They, they, they watch what we do as opposed to just react. Did you get streamers at all while you were there? I did like one time. So I'm hoping this time I get some streamers. I'm, I'm I'll, not going to lie. Was, I I'll, was send, I'll send my troops out to make sure you get streamers, okay? Yes, please. <laughs> what color do you want? I don't even care. I just want streamers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, you're going back in January, which is super, I'm super excited for you. That's amazing. Um, Anything else coming up for you here in the near future? Yeah. So the rest of the year is kind of slow. Intentionally, unintentionally, uh, you know, like, so since that first tour of Japan, I came home and I just decided I didn't want to work my, my job anymore. So I just, I haven't been working. Um, So I just, I've been, I've been trying to just fill in my dates and try and just, just wrestle, make my money through wrestling. Um, you know, so December slows down. Uh, I'm mostly in Ohio. Yeah. I think I'm just in Ohio, uh, you know, you know, back home, uh, for the, for the rest of December, uh, between, uh, war that runs out of Lima mega championship wrestling that runs out of like the Elyria near Cleveland area. And then premier championship wrestling that runs out of Cleveland, um, you know, I, I might go check out a few shows, might go check out AIW in Cleveland and a couple others. Um, but my schedule is pretty light. When I come home, I'm, I'm trying to fill my schedule out. Uh, I think in April I'm going to debut up in Maine. Um, so there's, there's stuff in the works. Just, you know, it's still so far in advance and before this trip that I don't want to, like, overthink of where things are going to be. Um, but I'm working at trying to get myself out to some new places. So we'll see what happens. You're still grinding it out then, right? I am for sure. How long you plan on grinding it out? You think? Uh, you know, I I keep telling myself that this is all I this is all I'm gonna do. This is all I have to do. But I just like I said. I mean, I I definitely know that uh, I've I've definitely had uh, enough head injuries that make this motion sickness, this this dizziness, constant. Like this is a constant thing. Uh, so I'm just hoping I can try and like find a way to fit a role in wrestling you know, I don't necessarily want to make a transition or anything, just like have like a secondary role. If I can, I'm not good at uh, talking. I'm not good at commentating and and announcing. I just got to find a role where I can fit in like a backstage or or some kind of role, Uh, you know, because in ring stuff, I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon, but you know, just like you, we've seen so many happen so many times, you never know what's going to happen. But for me, I just, I want to remain, uh, in and around professional wrestling. So if, if I can find another role that I can fit myself into, I would love that. 
Thank you so much for joining us. Where can we find you on social media? Man, I usually have a business card with me, so I don't forget, but I don't. So I'm going to guess. Uh, I have <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> my Twitter is Zoe Sky Pro, and my Facebook and Instagram are Zoe Sky Official. If that's, if that's wrong, wrong if that's wrong, I'll put on a note. I'll put notes on the uh, podcast. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you opening up to us, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. No problem. Thank you for having me.